It's a kitchen built on legend and the legacy of 21 generations. Enriched with centuries-old temple tradition and seasoned with modern-day technologies. Annapurna is a place where all the devotees are fed. So we feed them with uh, great respect and honor so that they are satisfied. It's where folklore, faith and family values blend together to serve up a hearty spread for thousands of pilgrims. Today we are uh, expecting around uh, one lakh people. Now, in the dazzling annual Lakshadipotsav festival, the kitchen must whip up a spectacular meal and rise to the occasion as one of India's temple-run mega-kitchens. This is Dharmasthala's Annapurna. Nestled in the southwestern hills of coastal India is Dharmasthala, a town whose name translates to the abode of righteousness. Every day, thousands of pilgrims from across the country are drawn to its temples. They're here to worship the Hindu deity, Lord Manjunatha. A god believed to be the benevolent dispenser of justice. The temple is the main attraction in Dharmasthala. But for many, their visit is incomplete without a meal at the Annapurna dining hall. Annapurna's hall and kitchen are high on the mega scale. On any given day, they prepare a hearty six-item menu, feeding anywhere from 25,000 to 50,000 people. It's like catering to nearly 400 wedding parties in a single day. But for those who run the kitchen, it's a matter of preserving a sacred belief. There is a tradition and a proverb which says, after darshan at Dharmasala, if you don't take prasad, that is food, your yatra is not full, the journey is not full. Keeping up with tradition is a full-time occupation for Dr. Virendra Hegade. As chief administrator of Dharmasthala's temple properties, it's a responsibility that he was born into, in a legacy that claims to date back nearly 800 years. According to legend, about eight centuries ago, Dharmasthala was just a sleepy hamlet. As the story goes, a local Jain family was visited by divine spirits who were impressed by the family's piety. As a reward, they instructed the family to construct the Manjunatha temple and become its custodians. The family's head became the Dharma Adhikari, or chief administrator. 21 generations on, Dharmadikari Virendra Hegade is the man in charge. It's part of his job to take care of every pilgrim who visits. So when a devotee visits, he must be only concentrating on darshan of the Lord, prayers, meditation, worshipping and nothing else. He should not worry about his mundane affairs like where to stay, where to eat, where to stay. All those things should not be worried about. Annadana, or meal offerings for pilgrims and the needy, has been a tradition in the Hegade family for generations. In 1955, Virendra Hegade's father decided to build Annapurna, a dining hall where pilgrims could come and eat a hearty meal, absolutely free of cost. Annapurna is a place where we all the devotees are fed. So we feed them with uh, great respect and honor so that they are satisfied. Running Annapurna is a family affair, one that is overseen by D. Harshendra Kumar, younger brother to the family scion and the chief operations officer of the kitchen and dining hall. 
It's a huge responsibility, feeding tens of thousands of pilgrims each day and running a service across spaces big enough to fit four basketball courts. This is around 19,800 square feet of uh, carpet area. So we have about nine bays in this uh, uh, line. Each bay is 6.5 meters gap. So each bay will take care of around 400 people at a time. Each line will take 13 minutes to feed and clean. On a regular day, this is mega service. But come winter, the stakes get even higher. As Dharmasthala gets into the festive mood, Annapurna must prepare for one of its biggest services of the year. It's a high-level meeting of all the key players, from the Hegede brothers to managers and supervisors. It's all for the annual Festival of Lights, held over five days in the winter months, called Lakshadipotsava. The last four days of the festival have been filled with hectic activity. Markets, music and dance have filled the streets. But the biggest celebration is yet to come. The fifth and last day of the festival begins early for the managers of Annapurna. Senior kitchen manager Raviraj is amongst the first of the staff to arrive. He quite literally holds the keys for today's meal service. With the flip of the switch, the kitchen steam boilers are turned on. Just as the sun rises, it's time to get the festival meal cooking. Through the course of the day, devotees will visit the Manjunatha temple to worship and perform rituals. And more of them will eat at Annapurna today than at probably any other time of the year. Today we are expecting around one lakh people. So we are looking forward for the devotees to walk in and have the prasadam and they go fully satisfied from this Annapurna. Annapurna must roll out the red carpet for nearly four times the size of its regular crowds. This temple-run mega kitchen will need its dedicated crew of workers to hit the ground running and whip up one of its largest meal services of the year. In the coastal township of Dharmasthala in southern India, devotees of the Hindu god Manjunatha are converging for a celebration. November is time for Lakshadipotsava, the five-day festival of lights. Today is the grand finale and it draws the faithful in large numbers. In the temple's mega kitchen, the staff is preparing for possibly the largest meal service of its annual calendar. The food must be enough for an estimated 80,000 to 100,000 people. One of the manager's first jobs in the kitchen is getting everything spick and span. Then it's on to preparing the staple component of the menu, rice. There are massive amounts to be cooked in just a matter of four to five hours. At the very least, Annapurna will serve 6,500 kilos of rice on the last day of the Lakshadipotsava festival. Depending on the crowds, this number could rise to as much as 8,000 kilos. 
That's enough to keep over 500 rice eaters in America satisfied for a year. Senior kitchen manager Subramania Prasad oversees the cooking of rice, which in most South Indian meals is a serious affair. The quantities may be mega, but so is the quality. Today, boilers are steam cooking a variety called Sona Masuri, exported around the globe for its light and fluffy grains and fragrant aroma. As this aroma wafts across the kitchen floor, another taskmaster gets his station going. Head cook Shrikantha Bhatt has seen nearly 30 Lakshadipotsavas come and go in the temple kitchens of Dharmasthala. Today, like every day, he expedites the production of the main dishes. Nanna. ಅಡಿಗೆ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ಏನಂದರೆ ನಮಗೆ ನಾಳೆಗೆ ಬೇಕಾಗುವ ಎಲ್ಲ ತರಕಾರಿಗಳನ್ನು ಹಿಂದಿನ ರಾತ್ರಿಯೇ ತರಕಾರಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚುವ ಪರ ಬಳಿ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತೀವಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಪ್ರಮಾಣದ ತರಕಾರಿ ನಮಗೆ ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಆ ಪ್ರಮಾಣದ ತರಕಾರಿ ಮತ್ತು ಆ ತರಕಾರಿ ಯಾವ ವಿಧವಾದ ತರಕಾರಿ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಾದ ಮೇಲೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಹೇಳಿ ಹೋಗಿರ್ತೀವಿ ಅವರು ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆ ಐದು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಬಂದು ಆ ತರಕಾರಿಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿಟ್ಟಿರ್ತಾರೆ Around 25 workers get to the job of chopping vegetables. This small army is vital, considering 4,000 kilos of vegetables will be needed to cook the festival spread. Not just vegetables, but even spices are doled out on a mega scale. Not in spoonfuls, but in buckets. It all goes into preparing the star dishes of the meal. Nearly 3,000 litres of thick, flavourful curried stew of vegetables called sambar will be prepared with 45 kilos of sambar spices. And around 4,000 litres of a soup-like stew called rasam will be made as a tangy accompaniment. Vegetables like tomatoes and cucumber will go into preparing a curry called kutu. It will all be washed down with buttermilk. Dessert will be a piece of sweet. A key ingredient in the menu is coconut, which is typical of coastal South Indian cuisine. It takes a crew of four workers and grating machines to get through today's massive requirement. ನಮಗೆ ಮಾಮೂಲಿ ದಿವಸಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಸಾ ಸಾವಿರ ಏಳ್ನೂರ ಐವತ್ತರಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಸಾವಿರ ತೆಂಗಿನಕಾಯಿ ಹಾಕ್ತೀವಿ ಈ ಲಕ್ಷದ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ಟೈಮಿಗೆಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ಸಾವಿರ ಸಾವಿರದ ಆರುನೂರು ತೆಂಗಿನಕಾಯಿ ಉಪಯೋಗ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂದರೆ ತೆಂಗಿನಕಾಯಿ ಉಪಯೋಗ ಮಾಡೋದು ಯಾವತ್ತು ತಕ್ಕ ಅಂದರೆ ಈ ತೆಂಗಿನಕಾಯಿ ಅರ್ ರುಬ್ ಇದು ಮಾಡಿ ಈ ತೊಗರಿ ಬೇಳೆ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಆ ಟೇಸ್ಟ್ ಬರೋದು ದಪ್ಪ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಅದು ಸ್ಮೆಲ್ ಬರ್ತದೆ Procuring these numbers of coconuts every day can be a tough and expensive nut to crack. Luckily, there are some perks to being a temple-run kitchen. It's all about growing your own produce. But this isn't just any home vegetable garden. These plantations have been nurtured over generations. Today, they still employ old-school daredevilry to reap their harvest. In our country, we have a lot of vegetables in our country. We have a lot of vegetables in our country. We have a lot of vegetables in our country. It's not all about coconuts. These fields supply assorted varieties of vegetables, paddy, and even spices like pepper to Annapurna's kitchens. Hey, 
The plantations also grow nearly one million betel nuts, many of which are supplied to the temple. Anantra, bale kai be kakte the. Orsha vanda ke eradin da muru laksha na o bale bale kai korte the. Bale yele korte the. Plantation harvests go a long way in helping the mega kitchen, which is inching closer to starting today's first round of festival meal service. In the main Manjunatha temple, devotees have started lining up in large numbers. It's time for sacred proceedings to begin. As Dharmadikari or chief administrator of the temple, Virendra Hegade presides over the solemn rituals. Meanwhile, in Annapurna, Harshendra Kumar takes stock of the preparations along with senior kitchen managers Ravi Raj and Subramanya Prasad. The first batch of food has been prepared. It's a quality check of the senses. Grains of rice are evaluated for their softness and texture. Eyes and nose evaluate look and aroma. We have to be ready with about 80 to 85 quintals of rice and about 3,500 to 4,000 kgs of vegetables, then followed by the other ingredients and provisions and all those things. So we are ready for that. Annapurna's staff has been hard at work since 5 a.m. When the doors open at 10.30 a.m., it must satisfy the first round of approximately 30,000 devotees, including many who have traveled from other towns to celebrate the grand finale of the Festival of Lights, like the Bhatt family. Lakshadiposva is one of the very important festivals of Dharmasara. And uh, during these days, the entire place is in a festive mood. And uh, we are very much happy to be here as a part of the entire festival. I really feel uh, one with the entire population that joins here in, uh, in the praise and the worship of Lord Manjunatha. The Bhatt family waits their turn to enter the temple's sanctum where the ritual of naivedyam, or symbolic feeding of Lord Manjunatha, is going on. Actually, naivedyam to the god is going on. And uh, at this point of the time, when you have food, so as it happens to us, we maintain silence when we have food. Similarly, silence should be maintained when god is also having food. So we are not supposed to disturb him either. We go off shirts inside the temples because it's a place of divinity where the God knows us in and out, all of us, and uh, it is not necessary to pretend in front of God. So it's uh, enough if we go with the minimum what we have. As the Bhats wait for the symbolic completion of God's meal at the Annapurna dining hall, there's another kind of waiting. Senior kitchen manager Subramania Prasad and supervisor Srinik anticipate the first footfalls of what promises to be a long and busy day. Annapurna's mega kitchen has been buzzing with activity since 5.30 in the morning. In just a short while from now, it will be expected to start feeding anywhere between 80,000 to 100,000 devotees. The employees know when the crowd will be more and when the crowd will be less. That is very interesting. I need not tell them. They themselves know, so they are mentally ready to cater the devotees. 10.30 a.m. The manager and his supervisor make a final review of the kitchen and dining hall. Outside in the queues, the wait is over. Crowds stream into Annapurna. Diners are seated on the floor in traditional Indian style. Also in a traditional style, they are served on leaf plates. 
when there is a Lakshadipotsava mega festival, plates we can't give. That's a cleaning and it takes time. So we give the leaf. So leaf means it is a saru and immediately we dispose it. It helps us to speed up the process, serving. Just how speedy is the service? It takes 13 minutes, less than half the time to order and home deliver a pizza, to seat, serve, feed and clean up after the diner has left. Timing is everything. People are seated in rows. When the first row is served, the second row is seated. By the time the seventh row has been seated and served, it's time to clean the first row. Speed is also the name of the game at the gates. There is no stoppage because the devotee doesn't feel that he is in the queue and he has blocked for a long time. He comes within uh, 10 to 15 minutes to the dining hall. For the Bhats, a successful visit to the temple sanctum has been had. It's a divine place. We just had a meeting with the Lord Manjunatha and it's a divine feeling for all of us. God is everywhere, but when we come to the place of God, we feel rejuvenated. We will be now heading towards Annapurneshwari uh, place where Annachatra is available and we will be receiving the uh, Bhojan Prasadam uh, over there. As the Bhatt family makes their way to Annapurna, Inside the hall, a very special visitor has dropped by. Dharmadikari Virendra Hegade, the man who is not just an administrative head of Dharmasthala, but is considered by many to be a direct representative of Lord Manjunatha. As part of his duties, he will survey preparations in the kitchen. And this temple meal will have to pass his divinely sanctioned flavor test. It's the most festive time of the year in the temple town of Dharmasthala in southern India. It's the festival of lights or Lakshadipotsava. In the Annapurna dining hall, thousands of devotees of the god Manjunatha are partaking of a special meal on the occasion. In the kitchen, Dharmasthala's administrative head, Virendra Hegade, drops by to check that everything is up to mark. Always the head of the institution, if he come and inspects, then there will be minor changes, my brother Harsha Arvi. Immediately we attached some of the minor adjustments. Now I found that in one vessel, there was most vegetable and in other vessel, gravy was more than the vegetable. So I was checking why that is the different. These are the things which we try to, you know, day to day adjust and uh, try to improvise. For the staff of this mega kitchen, each meal is a matter not just of volume and taste, but also of spiritual satisfaction. So this is Anna Yajna. So we're serving all these people, and once they are content, there all that hunger, that fire is, you know, erased. The smile on their face is a receipt for the happiness. See, expression by words are different. But if you see a person content, his face itself expresses the happiness he enjoys. I think that's what more important. It's a tedious job to cook and to serve and to clean everything. And everything is smooth running. It's run so automatically. It is so clean. It was really, really tasty and sumptuous. Uh, we, we really are blessed to have the food of this quality uh, with all the devotees here together with. The Lakshadipotsava meal is considered a blessing by devotees. But they don't just consume, they also contribute. A lot of devotees do send uh, their uh, rice and uh, prov pulses and uh, provisions and vegetables. So we have never uh, ran short of these uh, things. 
No matter how rich or poor, the faithful give what they can. Today, the kitchen's godown is receiving one of the many such special deliveries. Then there is the donation ritual called Tulabaram. It's a traditional practice where the devotee contributes gifts equal to their body weight to the Lord. It's all done under the watchful eye of Dharmadikari Hegade, whose presence validates the donation. The Tulabaram is an of prayer made by devotees. Every day we get a lot of such uh, offerings to the Lord. Uh, rice and jaggery, sugar, uh, coconut, whatever is offered is then used in the kitchen. I've shared a deep connect with this place right from childhood and I keep visiting this place pretty often. And I always wanted to get this Tulabara done. I just started working so I probably thought I can ask for some uh, wishes from uh, from here so that I which will help me in my propel my career. With the full weight of faith behind them, the Tulabaram offerings join the other supplies and make their way to the temple's massive storehouses. But this isn't an ordinary warehouse. It's a trip into the past. This is the Jama Ugrana, or storehouse. It's an industrial-sized building that stocks up not just Annapurna's kitchens, but also the Manjunatha temple. In this ancient building, it's as if time stood still. This Ugrana is <laughs> Even the staff seems to hark back to an earlier time. There is the Musaddi, or store manager, the Tuladhari, or the man with the weighing scale, the Saledwars, or helpers, and the Shanbhog, or the accountant, who won't be found hidden behind a computer because the storehouse may deal in tons and quintals on a daily basis, but bookkeeping is still taken rather literally and done in a book. So sometimes, wherever it is possible, we enjoy maintaining the tradition so that at least our next generation will feel. Centuries-old traditions are still stockpiled in this ancient storehouse. Because even today, Annapurna continues to be one of the most popular dining destinations in Dharmasthala. The dining hall is getting busier by the minute, with lines of hungry devotees getting longer. Behind the scenes, the kitchen staff has been hard at work. As both the front and the back of the house soldiers on, in a separate back room, a team of workers is silently preparing one of the most popular offerings on festive days like today, the sweet. 
In any other setting, these sweets would be considered just a treat. But in a spiritual setting like this, it's considered prasad, or holy sacrament, blessed by the temple deities themselves. Thousands of squares of sweet prasad are prepared from jaggery, flour, ground from pulses and milk products like ghee or clarified butter. In fact, milk, in all its forms, is a big ingredient in the Annapurna's mega kitchens and in the Manjunatha temple. Once again, there's a distinct advantage to Annapurna being a temple-run affair. The Dharmasthala's temple dairy farm is home to nearly 125 cattle. Cows are considered sacred in the Hindu religion and in this cow shed, they get star treatment. These are grass-fed cows with a dedicated two-acre field serving as their very own mega kitchen. If that weren't enough pampering, their bovine menu is enriched by Annapurna itself. As rice boils to feed thousands of devotees, there is a parallel meal preparation for dairy cows. This is starchy water left over from cleaning and cooking rice. Nearly 3,000 to 5,000 litres of it is generated on an average day. Disposing it in an environmentally safe way isn't easy. So, instead of throwing it away, it's sent through pipelines into the feeding tubs of the cattle, supplementing their regular diet. And the cows return in kind. Every day, the dairy produces approximately 3,500 litres of milk. Almost all of it is sent back to the Annapurna. So as much as possible, we try to grow our requirements and meet it. Still, we are short by another 50% to 60%, which we procure from different places. It's just one aspect of waste management in a mega kitchen that's so committed to the cause, its floor plan was built around it. When we planned the architectural design, we felt that we have to more focus on the waste management. So we went, started from the back side, so the kitchen part and the garbage part. From there, we came to the main hall. This plan is especially vital on festival days like today, where Annapurna generates between 1,000 to 3,000 kilos of organic waste, from the remnants of a hectic chopping session to the remains of the festive meal and even the plates they've been served on. Every scrap of waste is collected and transported to the back of the kitchen and down garbage ducts. From here, it will leave the kitchen and go across the temple grounds to a landfill far from habitation. Next, nature takes its course. In time, it dries up and it's time for the next level, composting. Composting is an environment-friendly way to recycle organic waste and get natural fertilizers in the bargain. Every year, close to 130,000 kilos of compost is produced. It all goes back into the fields of Dharmasthala. Eventually, all the benefits trickle down to the mega kitchens of Annapurna. From produce to fuel, completing the circle of sustainability, seamlessly tying together with the kitchen's centuries-old legacy. Every time when we go out and see something good, something beautiful, something remarkable, something revolutionary, something change, we always bring it back to Dharmasthala. A lot of devotees come here and they have some technology. They come and offer us, sir, we have this technology, we have this one. So if we feel it is right, we try to explore it. While the Hegede family listens to the demands of the times and devotees, it also keeps an ear out for tradition. Nothing passes without a consultation with Lord Manjunatha. So that is my risk as Hegde, 
to request him, to plead with him, to beg with him, to argue with him and get a permission to change certain systems. So we are always using the technology for improving the, our old traditional systems. We have not changed the tradition. The kitchen may be decades old, but its preparations for the celebration of Lakshadipotsava are still as big as they ever were. The Annapurna Dining Hall has been welcoming diners since 10.30 a.m. Now, at 1 p.m., managers and supervisors pause to evaluate the halfway mark. This is the moment of truth. Will the morning's preparations see crowds through the peak lunch hours? Or will this mega kitchen have to start from scratch? The temple town of Dharmasthala in coastal South India has come alive for the annual festival of lights called Lakshadipotsava. On the last day of the five-day festival, the town has seen a heavier-than-usual influx of devotees. Dharmasthala is awash in religious fervor, spiritual activities and traditional and cultural events. The Manjunatha temple provides food for the devotee's soul. And when they hunger for more, they turn to Annapurna. The staff assesses the crowds still waiting to get in and decides if more food needs to be cooked. If the queues are long, as they are on this festival day, then the cooks need to get going again. In the kitchen, workers need to get cracking on the second batch of food. This means boiling another batch of rice in the same, if not higher, quantity and preparing the sambar, rasam and kutu vegetable curry once again. But unlike the morning, they don't have the luxury of time. Because the next batch has to be prepared by 3 p.m. In the dining hall, servers too will have to keep going until evening when service will end. By then, it will have been a 12-hour workday for many on the staff. But it's a service they believe is sacred. For the Annapurna crew, it's time to relax. The much-anticipated festival service is over. Over a hundred thousand people have left the hall satisfied with bellies full. Swami Anugraha Dinda illi yaude samasigalu nadi lila. Ashtodotta sankeli jana bandhi drukuda atyanta suvyastita vagi illi anna dhanada 
ವ್ಯವಸ್ಥೆ ನಡೆದಿದೆ ಒಂದೇ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಕೂಡ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಡೆದಿಲ್ಲ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ಸಾಂಗವಾಗಿ ನೆರವೇರಿದೆ ರಾತ್ರಿ ಹೊತ್ತು ನಡೆಯುವಂತಹ ರಥೋತ್ಸವ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸುವುದರ ಮೂಲಕ ಈ ಒಂದು ಲಕ್ಷದೀಪದ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಸಂಭ್ರಮದ ಒಂದು ಸಮಾಪನಗೊಳಿಸಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಭಾಗವಹಿಸುವುದರ ಮೂಲಕ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ತೊಡಗಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ಳಿಕ್ಕಿದ್ದೇನೆ As Laksha Dipotsava draws to a close, devotees come out in droves to participate in the grand chariot procession. It's a mega event signaling the five-day festival's climactic end. crowds pour into the main streets of Dharmasthala for one last glimpse of their patron deity Lord Manjunatha For many of the faithful it is the end of a short and action packed visit They mark it by adding their own bit of light to the shimmering evening As you light candles here, people believe that their life also get lit up like this. I mean, it becomes it gets brighter as you brighten up the place. This is the significance of this place. None of the people from here goes unsatisfied, nor for darshan, nor for food, nor for their stay. For the Hegade family, it is the culmination of playing host for one more year. and one more opportunity to uphold centuries old temple traditions we say the more the devotee is satisfied the lord is pleased so we want to satisfy him so that in turn the lord will be pleased